Hello and welcome to what will possibly be a slightly geeky vlog. It's a week and a half since Crick, so the time has come to install my brand new lead carbon batteries. What's that you say? A week and a half? How have you not installed the batteries already? Well, I wanted to get some more wires because I'm going to slightly rejig how the battery bank is wired up. It's not optimal at the moment. It's been working fine, but technically speaking, it's not quite how you should do it. So as I put the new batteries in, I'm going to rewire it slightly. I also needed to get a little dongle adapter thing to plug into my Victron inverter charger so that I can reconfigure that to be properly um, configured for the new battery type because the presets you get with it aren't quite right. I suspect they'd work, but they're not just exactly right so I need to tweak it and that means I need to plug in a laptop and for that I needed this little dongle thing anyway. I've got all the bits now so I can install the batteries. This is the battery I've bought. I've got three of these lead carbon 100 amp hour although I noticed the 100 amp hour rating is measured at the C10 rate not the usual C20 so I think at C20 they would actually be over 100 amp hour. I don't know by how much 105, 110 They've got all sorts of good spec about them, which you can see written on the battery. They're fast charging, very quickly up to 90% charge, loads of cycle life, even down to 60% depth of discharge. They don't mind being left partially charged, which batteries normally do mind, and they operate over a wide temperature range and you can charge them down to zero degrees, which some other battery types can't. Well, this just gave me a shock and a half because I suddenly realised those battery dimensions will not fit my battery bay at all. They're way wrong. And yet, I'd ask the people when I bought them, are they a standard standard size, which is normally 175 wide, 330 long, and about 220 high? It's all right, panic over. Turns out that on the side of the box, they've printed the dimensions of the box. The battery is 175 wide, 330 long, 220 high. So that's the box dimensions. Phew! Everybody's battery bank will be different, of course, but for me, here I am in the engine room, there's the back doors. And over here, on the left, underneath the inverter, down under there is where the batteries are stored. These then are the existing batteries, which are about 10 years old I think. You can see you've got one, two, three, 110 amp, measured at the C20 rate, leisure batteries and then the one on the right is the engine starter battery which for these purposes is irrelevant but it is connected. You can see the um, negatives are all connected together so I will need to disconnect that. I mentioned these are not properly wired and here's one example you see that red wire that's the positive coming from the solar charge controller and the negative from the charge controller is going to this one so the charge controller from the solar is going to the middle battery and from there the voltage spreads out to the ones either side technically that red lead should be over here and the black lead should be over here so the charge is fully distributed across the bank of three rather than going to the middle and then outwards I'm fairly sure the difference is absolutely fractional, but strictly speaking, that's how it should be done. And it's a similar story with the main 12 volt feed to the fuse board, which is coming off this end battery on the positive there, and the negatives being all connected is going off to the negative there. So it's all being, the whole bank of three is being drained from this end battery outwards. Whereas really, if that's the negative, this positive should be over on the further battery. So again, you're, you're either discharging or charging the battery across the entire bank. So that needs to be changed. Before we go any further, I must of course do a disclaimer. I haven't a clue what I'm talking about. Nothing I say should be taken as gospel. This is not a tutorial. This is me documenting me changing my batteries. You do your own at your own risk. Absolutely, I do not take any responsibility. I'm not a qualified electrician. I'm just doing it as I understand it. There are two schools of thought when it comes to disconnecting batteries. One school will argue quite vehemently you should disconnect the negatives first. The other school will argue 
equally vehemently, you should disconnect the positives first, and both have seemingly very good reasons for their points of view. So what I'm going to do is switch the camera off, disconnect them and not show you how I've done it, and that way we can't have an argument. It is worth noting that the solar is currently chucking in a fair number of amps, 13.6, and I don't have any kind of disconnect switch for the solar panels, and you certainly shouldn't just pull the solar charger off the batteries. So I'm actually going to have to go out and put blankets over the solar panels so that they're not producing any charge or any voltage so that I don't get any arcs and sparks when I disconnect them. Also, that big red switch down there is the main 12 volt shutoff that disconnects the batteries to the fuse board and from there to the rest of the boat. So before I do anything else, that needs to be turned off, which is just a matter of turning it through 90 degrees. And unlike some boats, I only have one switch which seems to have separate terminals for the starter battery and main 12 volts. Some boats have multiple switches to disconnect everything. On, on mine it's just the one. One tip I was given for this is to wrap all but the very bit of the spanner you're using to undo the bolts in tape so that as you're opening the bolts you can't accidentally touch the other end to, um, to another battery terminal and short the whole thing out. So that is nicely insulated. After rather more time than it probably should have taken, but I am so, so cautious with batteries. I do not want anything sparking and blowing up. That would be bad. So the leisure batteries are now disconnected. The starter battery positive is disconnected. You'll see I've been so cautious I've stuck tape over the terminals just to stop myself blowing things up, even on the old batteries. So now I'm ready to heave these out, if my back will take it. Batteries weigh an absolute ton. Heave all of those out and drop the new ones in place. My back is still OK so far. This is what the empty battery bay looks like. Obviously the starter battery is still there. Not too bad for rust, that is all fairly superficial. Could do with getting the vacuum cleaner in for that pile of dust in the corner. But of course the vacuum cleaner runs off the inverter and the inverter runs off the batteries. So until I put the batteries back in, I can't put the vacuum cleaner on. And once the batteries are back in, I won't be able to get to the dust anyway. So, dust pan and brush it is. One, two, three. Now just before I wire them up, I'm curious to know what voltage they are supplied with and how they're holding it. So I'm just going to pop a voltmeter across them. Leftmost battery. Ooh, hang on. 12.95. The middle battery. 12.94. And the right hand battery. 12.95. Well, they're all very well charged. Good. It's a warm day and lifting batteries is heavy work, especially when you are as ridiculously unfit as I am. However, they're back in, so now all I need to do is wire them all up again. And this is the bit I really don't like because no matter that everything is switched off, every time I do this, one of the batteries always gives a little spark when I reconnect it. I don't know why, it's all switched off. Every time without fail and I don't like it, it makes me jump. Right, much, much later than planned, and actually I think my hand is shaking because I've been... I, I really get nervous around batteries, and you know what, when I connected the last red up, even though everything's still switched off, there was a spark. I've come to the conclusion it must be residual charge in the inverter, because that's full of coils and capacitors and things, and I think when you reconnect it all, whatever is left in the inverter just discharges. Anyway, it was one brief spark and that was all fine. Now, as you can see, um, now hang on, I'm going to have to get the tripod for this. So what we've now got here is, that end terminal is just an end terminal connecting to that. This new wiggly wire here, going up to this device in the corner, that's the Bluetooth dongle for the inverter. So that is new, and that is actually a temperature sensor on the battery. And it doesn't matter about that being in the middle. And then the main action on the batteries as regards the positive comes from here. 
There's the feed from the charger inverter, or to the inverter when it's being an inverter. And then here's the main 12 volt feed, which used to be on this one, so the battery bank was draining that way. Well, now it's coming from here, so the red's from here, and the negative's from there, so it's across the bank. And also, you can see I've put in this new cable here from the solar controller, so instead of going to the middle, it's also going to the end there, and the other one was there, the black one, and that is now on there. There it is. So again, the charge is distributed across the bank. And when the inverter charger is putting its positive in there, its negative is also over there. So all in all, that is a better setup, not only in terms of the batteries, but in terms of the wiring. And I've got this dongly thing, which I first have to do a bit more faffing about with to make that work. In other exciting news, I just flicked the big red switch to turn it all back on again. I didn't want to preempt that I was going to do that in case there was an almighty bang, but I've turned it and the light above my head came on, which I'd left switched on. There was no almighty bang. The solar charge controller I've reprogrammed with what I think are the settings for these batteries. I'll come back to that in a second. Uh, but I've still got the blankets on the panel, so it's not putting anything in. But it's all, it's all all right, and the solar charge controller is reading the 12.9. So I guess I'll go and take the blankets off and check that the charge controller is charging them all right. Although they are full, so they, they're probably not going to take any charge. I've taken the blankets off the panels. And the batteries are indeed almost fully charged because it's gone down to its float voltage. Well, 13.6 is the float, but it's gone almost immediately down to float. So it's just going to keep trickle charging them back up to 100. All seems well. I mentioned before that I was going to talk a bit about charging because I've had a bit of difficulty getting hold of the information about what the appropriate charge voltages should be. The batteries don't come with any data sheet in the box, although written on the side of the battery it does say float voltage 13.62. Well that is a good start, but I also needed to know what the actual charge voltage should be. So when the battery has been discharged, what should my solar be trying to put back into it in terms of charging voltage? And this has caused a bit of toing and froing between me and the supplier, which is DBS Lioch. Lioch? Lioch? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce it. They have, to their credit, been very responsive by email, on Twitter direct message, and finally in a phone call where it all got sorted out. But I had to go back and forth a bit and try and explain to them, and they didn't quite seem to understand my query, because the data sheet just mentioned the float voltage. Then they sent me another data sheet, and that mentioned the float voltage and an equalisation voltage, well, to me, equalisation is something you used to do to old-fashioned lead-acid batteries once in a blue moon, and at a much higher voltage than your normal charge voltage, and that was to recondition them and desulfate them, and that was very confusing because I didn't think these lead carbons needed equalisation, and still on the data sheet there was no mention of um, an absorption charge, which is what my solar controller would use to put charge into them. So a bit of toing and froing, and they ended up sending me this massive document, which was the complete battery installation manual, which seemed to assume I was some kind of off-grid, huge battery power installer person, way more than I needed uh, just for putting the batteries in my narrowboat. So toing and froing, as I say, they were very responsive, even though they didn't quite seem to understand what I was asking, but eventually spoke to them on the phone, and they basically sort of agreed with me that where it says on the datasheet equalisation, it's a bit of a misnomer with regards to the use I'm putting them. That really refers to installations where the batteries almost aren't doing anything, like off-grid CCTV monitoring and stuff that's not narrowboaty. But for narrowboat purposes, where you're discharging every day and recharging, that equalisation voltage is what I would call the charge voltage and the absorption voltage. So 14.1 to 14.4 volts listed as equalisation is what you should set your um, charger to. So I've set my charger to 14.25, which is bang in the middle of those two voltages, and the float 13.62, as, uh, as it's said on the side of the battery. And that seems to be it. There's, there's nothing else to do. Plop them in, set those two voltages, and you're away. So hopefully, all will be well. 
And with that, the inverter programming has been done. I didn't show you that basically because it was me just hunched over a laptop swearing, as is usual in these kind of things, but also because Victron's website and even the software is full of dire warnings how this shouldn't be done by anyone other than a trained Victron professional, even though actually it's very straightforward. But I don't be, want to be responsible for anyone having a go and then bricking their inverter and blaming me. So if you want to do it, go and look on the Victron website and download their software at your own peril. Either way, the batteries are in, and the fridge is on, and the lights turn on, and things seem to be working, so I will now keep an eye on them. Now, I don't have either a smart gauge or a Victron battery monitor or a state of charge indicator, so any observations I do about the batteries, frankly, are just going to be my kind of gut feeling about how they're doing, and looking at the voltage um, every night, once the solar has stopped putting anything in, and uh, seeing how they're holding up, really. It'll probably take a few months before I come to any kind of conclusion, but I shall do that in a future vlog. For the moment, they're in and they're working. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have any questions, you are welcome to put them down below. I'm not a battery expert. I'm not a solar expert. I kind of know what I'm doing, so I'll do my best to answer any. Otherwise, I might just say, go and look up the brochure or go and look at this website or whatever. Um, so apologies if I don't have any answers. Anyway, that's it for now. Cheerio.